All right guys, so welcome to our skills lesson for today. We are gonna warm up by, um, how do I describe this? So, I'm gonna tell you a word, and they're all gonna be our controlled vowel words, and they're, I'm gonna tell you the number of sounds in the word, if I remember correctly, they all have three. There might be a four sneaking in here and there, but I'm pretty sure it's all three. But what I'm really wanting you to pay attention and listen for is the distinction between the three different R-controlled vowel sounds we have learned. So R, like car, A-R, er, like her, E-R, and or, like for, O-R. So even if you look real closely at my mouth, you can see that there is some subtle differences in the way in which my mouth forms when I say each sound. So, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so, got blank space. So you have either paper and pencil or whiteboard and marker. This isn't something you need to keep, so you can, you know, set yourself up to erase it. I want you to go ahead and draw Three lines for three sounds, and look at how I do this, okay? So, why is my middle line longer? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to use more than one letter to spell that sound. That must be where my R-controlled vowel is, so my middle sound must be my vowel, okay? And in this case, they are our controlled vowels, meaning that it is a standard regular A-E-I-O-U followed by the letter R. So A-E-I-O-U and R stuck together like glue. The first word I have for you is part. Part. Let's tap out part. 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 Good. Let's spell, write the letter names for part. Art. Part. Excellent. Next, and I'm trying to think if I should erase or not. Yes, I will erase. I will erase. From, okay, no, we're not chaining, so I'm not going from anything. So part, good. Now, again, three sounds, three sounds, the next word is port, port, you see why I got confused there, P port, yes, I could have treated this one like a chain because I only changed one sound, I went from part to port, look, part, Port. Two slightly different shapes happening here. All right, so my next word for you guys, my next word, you ready? I can slow down a little bit, yeah. I'm gonna try not to erase my lines. See, if we were, if I thought about doing this a different way, I would have written my lines a wet erase marker, so then I might have to like take more effort to erase them, but they won't go away. So the next word is, Fern. Fern. How do we spell the word fern? Tap it. Fern. Fern. Let's spell it. Fern. Fern. Just tell me the letter names in fern. R-N. Excellent. Fern. Okay. Let's do another one. I'm trying not to erase my lines now. Alright. Let's do another one. How about the word farm? Farm. The cows and chickens and pigs live on a farm. How do you spell farm? Uh-huh. Good. Yeah, that's the same beginning sound. You're right. Farm. Farm. Great work. All right, let's do another one. Form. Oh, I forgot to erase. Sorry. 
Wait, what did you say? Oh, don't erase the whole thing? Why? Oh, I only changed the vowel sound. Okay. So from farm to form is actually only one sound change. I changed the vowel sound from R to or. Good job. Good job. All right, let's do another one. Let's do it this like this. Mm. Let's do two more, okay? The next one we're going to do. is Vern. Vern. Like our tour guide at the Green Fern Zoo, his name is Vern. Notice it's a name, meaning I need a capital letter at the beginning. Excellent. Capital. What letter is that? V. Good. Vern. Vern. His name is Vern. And here's the last one. And I want you to see what I do for the last one. Get ready. I'm going to extend my first sound. Why did I extend my first sound? Because the word I'm going to say, it must start with a digraph, meaning I need room for two letters. My last word is thorn. Thorn. Tap it. Thorn. Thorn. Let's write the word thorn. 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 Great job. Great. Warm up. We are ready. Let's keep it moving. Thorn. All right. Here we go. So what we're doing is, whew, all right. There's a lot of blanks here. We are planning, I always forget which step comes first, I'm sorry, plan, because in my brain, I guess the way I was originally taught it when I was your age was that the draft comes before the plan, but I think it was just like a language change that we've made over the years, and we realized, well, you're not really drafting first, you're, you're planning first, you're coming up with your ideas first, I'm like, okay, that makes sense, so, you know, so we're going to plan a descriptive paragraph about chips. We're going to plan a descriptive paragraph about chips. So in your cat book, we are going to do right here, 22.1. So the front and the back, we're going to do, don't worry about that one over there. We're doing this together. 22.1, we're going to do this together. Today, if we're planning, that means tomorrow we will be drafting. So don't lose anything. You will definitely, I hope you don't lose your cat book point to, between today and tomorrow. But yes, we're going to need this. You're going to need this. So we're going to draft nothing today. We're going to plan. So, okay, the first step in writing descriptions is to plan the description. So if we're going to plan, we're going to describe this chip. We need to plan first. What are you doing? So that means how something appears to our senses, how it looks, how it smells, how it tastes. We're going to taste an animal, a living, a live, a live living animal. I will not. No. I, um, how it sounds and potentially how it feels. Okay. So let's get started. No, that's a bad idea. You're right. That is a bad idea. Because when did we read chimps? Like two, three weeks ago, right? Yeah, so what are we going to do before we write anything? We're going to reread the story Chimps. So let's go ahead and reread it before we pl plan anything. Come on. Yes, like I said, it's very hard to write about a story we read like two weeks ago. So let's reread the story. Uh, I'm sorry, text, because this is nonfiction in our reader, The Green Fur Zoo. We're going to turn to the table of contents and find what page number does the story Chimps that we said we're going to read start on? Page 10. Good. Let's go ahead and turn to page number 10. Hey, Vern. And we're going to reread the story Chimps. 
before we write about it, before we do our descriptive writing about chimps. All right, so let's go. Chimps. Next, let's see the chimps. We have 10 chimps here at the Green Fern Zoo. You can see them all out there if you look hard. The one you see here is Bess. She has a snack in her mouth. Bess and the rest of the chimps like to munch on plants, nuts, and seeds. Quick question, what kind of, what, um, are they herbivores or carnivores? Herbivores, good job, good job. Oh snap, oh snap, that might be the wrong answer. This is why I gotta read a whole text before you answer questions. Do you see that chimp with the stick? That's Bart. Bart likes to have ants for lunch. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just said they were herbivores. Aren't ants a bug? Yes. Aren't bugs an animal? Yes. <gasps> Chimps aren't herbivores. They're omnivores, like people. They eat plants and animals. Oh, snap. All right, let's rewind. Let's start over. And this time we'll wait till we're done to answer questions about the text. And if I ask you more, tell me. Wait till the end. Okay. Chimps. Next, let's see the chimps. We have 10 chimps here at the Green Fern Zoo. You can see them all out there if you look hard. The one you see here is Bess. She has a snack in her mouth. Bess and the rest of the chimps like to munch on plants, nuts, and seeds. Do you see that chimp with the stick? That's Bart. Bart likes to have ants for lunch. To get the ants, he takes a stick and sticks it in an ant hill. Then he lifts it up and licks off the ants. Yum, yum. Oh, the baby. <laughs> the chimp with the rope in his hand is Max. He's just a babe. He was born in March. Bess is his mom. Max is a lot of fun. He likes to swing on the rope and splash in the pool. Oop, wait too far. The two chimps up on the rocks are Carl and Norm. Carl is the one on the left. Carl and Norm are pals, but they were not pals last week. Last week we gave them a branch from a fig tree for lunch. Norm took the branch and ran off with it. He ate all of the figs. Figs are a type of fruit, by the way, if you don't remember that. And actually, if you do them right, they're pretty sweet. So, Carl was mad at Norm all week. But that was last week. This week, the two of them are pals. Okay, so now when we turn the page, we see a title for another text, which means we need to skirt stop. That is the end of the text, chimps. If you honestly want to pause the video and read it again, you are more than welcome to. But we are going to go ahead and get ready to continue with our lesson and do our writing, uh, write our plan for our descriptive writing about the text, chimps. So, come on. All right, see, so now Chimps is fresh in our brain, and if we forget anything, our reader is also right here, and we know that Chimps starts on page number 10. So we're ready to plan our descriptive paragraph about Chimps. So first things first, what's the name of the critter? Well, I understand the one is the picture, and the picture is actually, what was his name? That is... One of the two at the end, right? That's one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this guy here, this is actually Norm. That is a picture of Norm. Him right there is Norm. But less specific. We're, we're not going to get that specific because for all of them we weren't given a name, and you're going to have an assignment that requires you to like have your own. So we're just going to put Chimps as the name of the critter. So go ahead, yeah, write that down. Chips. The name of the critter is Chips. I will describe Chips, lowercase. 
and I'm actually going to write a period at the end because even though that's not a complete sentence, this, I will describe chimps, is a complete sentence. All right, the first thing we need to identify is what it looks like. What do I see when I look at a chimp? What does it look like? So remember, in the plan phase, we're taking notes. We're going to take good notes that we can use them to draft a paragraph, but we're planning first. So what does he look like? This part this requires us to look at the pictures again, right? What does he look like? So they're hairy. Good. It is more of a hair consistency than a fur. They're hairy. They're like this, this darkish brown color. Good. Okay. They have, yeah, so it's hairy and brown. What it looks like? Well, I think we can agree that the, hair, that the chimp looks hairy. enough space. I need to erase this and return sweep and write brown on the next line. They're hairy and brown. Did you notice anything else about how they look? We'll look back at your text. Let's see. Let's look back. Let's look at the pictures of them. Uh -huh. Well, we're not going to use Q. Because that's an opinion. And in writing a descriptive paragraph about a nonfiction content, you want to state, your fa state the facts. You want to stick to the facts. I think he's cute. I told you the other day. I think Max is adorable. But we want to stick with the facts because in this descriptive paragraph, we're talking about nonfiction material. If we were writing a descriptive paragraph about something that's make-believe, then I would look more into the... Um, the cuteness of it, right? Now, sometimes when you do descriptive paragraphs, kind of like when we did the book reports, you will be asked something about what is your opinion, what do you think is the coolest, and that's where you would add an opinion piece. But for now, we're going to stick with the facts. So we said that they look hairy and brown, okay? You got it written down? Well, I could put it on my paper, too. That should be enough time for us to get together. All right. Now, the next question is what it sounds like. Now, this one's a little bit harder when you're reading. So, I got you. What it sounds like is, okay, this is what it sounds like. You ready? a hooting, even a hollering, some kind of like a, a squealy alarm, like alarm sound. So definitely uh, what it sounds like, uh, hooting and hollering? Hooting and hollering. I don't know if y'all know how to spell hooting and hollering. So what it sounds like, we can say that it is loud. They are loud. We know the tools to sound out loud. So loud. Hooting and yelling. These are words that we have the tools to sound out and spell. So it sounds like it is loud, hooting, and yelling. We've established the make loud hooting and yelling sounds okay so let's write this down make sure we all have our notes our plan in place that so we'll be able to write a draft so Loud, who 
hooting and yelling. Loud hooting and yelling. Good. The next question, the next sentence. So we've done look. We've done sound. Now I want to know what it feels like because we're not going to taste it. So I'm saying feel, that's your sense of touch using, you know, your hands. Well, how do you think a chimp would feel? Well, just like when we talked about the chips and their taste and their smell were related, in this case, the look and the feel are going to be connected. So how would you think a chimp would feel? We're going to, yep, we're going to repeat hairy, but do you think it's going to be rough or soft? Look back at the pictures. Look, this part we get from the pictures. Would the chimp be hairy or soft? I mean, well, we know it's hairy. Sorry. Rough or soft? Well, last I checked, things that are hairy are usually soft. No, okay, well, give your own hair a feel if you're not sure. But touch, your, touch something that's hairy. Touch something hairy. I'm going for my head. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, we're, gonna, we're in agreement that it feels like it feels what it feels like is hairy and soft did we actually touch a chimp no but we have touched things that are hairy before and we can make a connection between what hair feels like and what a chimp probably feels like that's called making an inference which is making a smart guess in reading and writing it's called inference in math and science it's usually called a hypothesis but smart guesses Inference. So we say it feels like it is still hairy, repeating hairy, and I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to return sweet. Soft. Hairy and soft. The chimp feels hairy and soft. Hairy and soft. All right, the next question we are to answer is, where is its home? Now, this is where our animals and habitats domain and our unit four skills are going to come. You see how this all connected? Just like we also, just like when we read about the Arctic, was like, hey, wait, puffin, Arctic, oh, snap, that's back. Yes. <laughs> where is its home? Where did these guys live? Well, let's see. Let's take a look at, remember when we talked about how when you go to the zoo, the polar bear habitat at the zoo is cold because at the zoo, people are trying to recreate what it would be like in nature for the animal, correct? Right. So what we're trying to find out here is based on these clues and pictures, what and what area, we know they're in the zoo in the book, but what is it like? when you see chimps in the wild. So, looking at this picture, okay, right? We see he's got a stick, he's trying to get in the anthill. We also see lots of what? We see trees, we see trees around him, good, okay? Uh, let's see, all right, so Max, the baby, he's got a rope, he wants to swing. So there's probably things that they can swing on, like maybe vines? Okay, okay. And let's see, tree branches. This one, there are not like a near a rock, so that's not giving us a lot of background information. So where is its home? We can infer or guess, make smart guesses, that they probably live in some kind of foresty habitat. We don't necessarily know what kind of forest yet, but we do know that there's different types of forests on our planet. So let's say that their home is a forest. For now, we're going to say their home is a forest, and maybe you can let me know something more specific about their home when we get together. So where is its home in the forest? Notice I said out loud in my complete sentence, but I'm writing my notes because this is a plan. And we can sound out forest. We have all the tools. Watch, let me underline the sounds in chorus. I want to make sure you see what I see. Or, eh, 
forest. Isn't that a spelling word? I feel like that's been a spelling word. It's a two syllable word, forest, forest. Put the sounds together for forest. Good job. So, yes, like I said, hopefully before we get to the draft stage, you would have told me more specifically what kind of forest. But we'll hold off on that. So. Ready to move on. We're saying the chimps home, natural habitat, not the zoo. We know these guys are at the zoo. But where is home is the forest. What food would it like? Ah, we've got several examples in our text about what kind of food they would like. We know they like to munch, munch, chomp, eat, because we know the tools that sound out munch. We don't know all the tools that sound out eat yet, at least not that spelling for the E sound. So Beth and the rest, and the rest of the chimps, not just Beth, but and the rest of the chimps like to munch on plants, nuts, and seeds. All of those are part of the correct answer. They also like ants. They're very crafty about getting those ants. Carl and Norm had a whole fight about the sweet fruit from the fig tree. So the figs from the tree is a plant. So we don't have to get that specific, but we do need to include... Plants, nuts, seeds, and ants, because chimps are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and meat. So, what food would it like? Plants. Nuts. Seeds. And ants. We have to check a couple pages, but we got that information that says the food they would like. What food would it like? It being the chimp would like plants, nuts, seeds, and ants. Plants, nuts, seeds, and ants. They are omnivores. Omnivores. Remember, using commas to make a list, yep. I'm pretty sure ants aren't the only bug they eat, but they're at the zoo. That was being what was available and being offered to them because there was an ant hill in the chimp habitat. Habitat means home, their home, good. All right, guys. So, we have now completed our plan for a descriptive paragraph. We have now completed our plan for a descriptive paragraph about chimps. We are going to use this information the next time we meet to write a, write a draft and draw a picture about chimps. We are doing one together so that you will be prepared to do one on your own. We're doing one together so that you will be prepared to do one on your own. That's not this week, but just a heads up. If you look in your book, so we did this page in your book today, Chips. But if you look ahead in your book, the next several pages are the exact same template, but with different animals pictured. The exact same template with different animals pictured. I already know which animal you're going to do. Nope, you cannot make requests. I've already decided in my brain who's doing what. There's like four, five different animals. A few of you will do this one, and then that one, and that one, and that one. I already have it planned out. And just like for this, where I reread the story to you, and then you read it, I will give you that same, you know, the same courtesy of partnering up with you to read the story. But yes. Have I stalled long enough? Do you have your plan written down? If not, go ahead and pause it right here. Hand out the way. Right here, right here. Okay, so you should have your plan. 
Either you got it done with me or you paused and completed it. Now, let's go into what it is you are being assigned to complete today. What I got to do today? Let's find out. Today, you have to do 20.2, which will be a matching activity, matching the words and the objects. Not too hard. You also have fill in the blank, PP16. So we're going to have, so the front of 20.2 will be one match. The back of 20.2 will be another match. The front of PP16 will be one fill in the blank. The back of PP16 will be the other fill in the blank. Six words, six blanks. You can only use one each time. Each one, one time. It's one to one. And make sure you're taking your time and then you're using the best judgment you can in answering these questions. Um, that's it. Yep. Yep. Uh, writing whew, is a lot, but it's good for you. And I think that's it. Make sure you're doing, you're getting your homework done. You know, you can't double up on that like that. And practicing your spelling words. Practicing your spelling words and getting your homework done, your water for it done. All right, guys, um, I'm going to tell you like I always like to, which is also very true. If you have any questions, ask me or another grown-up. That way we can make sure that we are all in full understanding of what it is we're responsible for. Make sure that you have your plan ready and available for the next time we meet. Your plan, don't tear it out your book. Do not tear it out your book. Mine is out the book for on purpose. So I can put it up here for the next time we meet. Make sure you have your plan so that when we meet next time, we'll be able to write a draft. Not a final copy, but a draft about chips. All right, guys, that is the conclude our lesson for today, and I'll see you later.